Good morning. Have you ever wondered why you need to eliminate your company's managers? Well, hang tight with us and you're going to find out why you do if you haven't thought of it already. Welcome. You're listening to the BAM Blog Breakdown where Brian Kaiser, Aaron Zambrano, and me, Mike Calderwood, break down expert business blogs so you can better understand and apply the information to your business and life for real results. We have a great show for you today. It is titled Stop Managing. It's based on a blog post by Chuck Blakeman. You can head over to chuckblakeman.com and check that out. And he titled it, Why You Need to Eliminate All Your Company's Managers. So I'm excited to get into the meat and potatoes of this. But before we start, uh, we want you to head over to YouTube and subscribe for our ch to our channel. We're not asking for email. You don't need to opt into anything. Just simply head over to YouTube and subscribe to our channel. It does a couple things. It's going to help us grow our show and gain visibility. And if you're getting value out of this show, you understand that we would appreciate that help. Also, it's going to keep you in the loop of what's going on, everything. Uh, when we have new shows, if you've missed a show, all that stuff, uh, YouTube's made it very simple. Just get over, subscribe, and if you like the show, you like the content, you're getting value, please share it with your friends. Secondly, we want to thank Evernote for keeping us organized and able to collaborate and make this show possible. So I am your humble co-host, Mike Calder. I'm here with my band partners, Brian Kaiser and Aaron Zambrano. Brian, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored, and uh, yeah, just a shout out to our, our friends over at Evernote, and uh, I think we have some more messages coming down the pipe, but uh, yep, we'll be, it's going to be an exciting show, this is a good one, Chuck uh, Chuck nailed this one, this was good. He sure did. Aaron, how about yourself? I, I mean, you're at the Red Sox training facility, so you got to be doing pretty good. <laughs> no, we're, not, we're not jealous or anything at all. Yeah. None of us are jealous at all. I'm a little spoiled, you know, what can I say? <laughs> but I'm having a Take great time. Take it in, brother. Take it having, in. Having a great time down here in sunny South Florida here at the Red Sox training facility and just ready to get this show going. Awesome. I'm ready to rock and roll. Uh, so, you know, I read this blog and it, you know, a lot of times I tell you guys I got to read it, I got to read it again, I got to read it again. Now, I did that anyhow, but first time through, man, this thing just really stood out. And there's just some really good stuff. And really what this is about for the listeners, whether you're a solopreneur or you have a C-suite team or you're a large corporation, small business, home-based business, it doesn't matter. Okay, um, This is all about managing versus leading. Managing versus leading. Okay, A leader is proactive. I'm not going to get into all the... the intricacies of the, the difference between a manager and a leader, but this is about being proactive and leading your business as opposed to just dealing with the day to day. So, um, you know, again, Chuck Blakeman is an expert in his space, and again, get over to ChuckBlakeman.com, check him out, but um, Chuck's post, again, why you need to eliminate all your company managers. I just want to kind of give you a quick summary of how he puts this together. He starts off with some in-your-face statistics of why people leave companies. And the number one reason is management. It's not the company. It's not, you know, the pay. It's not any of that stuff. It's managers. Then from there, from the statistics, he gets into the history of management. And I thought it was really cool information that I didn't know. I've been, I've been you know, studying the leadership space for two decades now, more than two decades. Um, I didn't know managers were created kind of during the industrial age to make factories run better, right? Well, Chuck goes on to say that they were a bad idea then and they're a bad idea today. You have to get over to the post at chuckblakeman.com and read it for yourself to get the, the full mean potatoes. So he starts with the stats, gets into the history, and then he even gives you examples of companies that are operating without management teams now, and they're operating successful. From there, he gives you a step-by-step -step how to begin to transition your business from management to leadership and what that looks like. And then the other thing he does, and I love this, is he gives why companies resist and avoid to adapt this concept of a management-less system in shifting to leadership. My big takeaway from this, guys, was lead, don't manage, which actually, if you've ever listened to any of my Creating Business Harmony stuff, it is principle number five, lead, don't manage. And this is what this is all about. A highlight for me, and he points this out, and I think this is so 
crazily powerful but yet scary to try to implement is replace every five to ten managers in your company with a leader but here's the true takeaway it's a leader he has no direct reports not like a manager he exists that's a very strong word he's not just there he exists to serve champion guide train and connect others to resources needed to succeed that is a lot different than a manager any aha moments guys Aaron how about you um, the, I mean the whole thing was an aha moment you know because I think he, he really um, he really made made you understand the importance of leadership and not so much somebody sitting there watching everything that you're doing almost like a supervisor so that was kind of the thing is just leadership 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 is what stuck out to me awesome what about you Brian you know when I went through and I always do this I read the I read the post uh, last week and then I put it on the shelf for a couple of days and I came back and did my notes and the big aha was the need for more leaders and more specifically the le the need for leadership training and as a business coach and like you um, you know Chuck going over this and showing some of these companies how they need to replace these these managers and and get a a leader that you know like you said he exists to serve um, he doesn't exist to, to micromanage like Aaron said or to be the supervisor he exists to serve and I think that that's where you know people like you and I that operate in the expert space of, of training and coaching come in as as we need to look at ways we can better people through leadership training I think there's a very big need for that with Chuck putting this information out I love it you know and he points out in this article that when they created and, and again get over the, the article for the listeners and, and read it for yourself but he talks about when they created management when it was invented so to speak it was that they said employees were stupid and lazy and managers were there to kinda supervise stupidness and laziness with their intelligence right because they were smarter but and Chuck pointed out they were the, the less of the stupid and right, lazy yeah, people they, there you go, right? <laughs> yeah. But leadership isn't about managing people. It's about actually seeing the greatness in people. They're not stupid. They're not lazy, right? They're capable. They're they're brilliant. And I'm just there as a leader to support them. And I think there's a huge, huge perspective difference. So speaking of perspective, let's get into Aaron Zimbrano, I fit perspective. Aaron Give us something about this that, that, that you want to tell us in terms of the wellness world and health world. Well, this particular uh, blog really reminded me a lot of my personal business and my personal story. So I have to take everybody back. About 15 years ago, I started in the health and fitness industry. And, and during that time, I, I was a full-time, I was, I was a trainer the entire time that I did it. There was times where I was a part-time trainer when I was in college. When I got out of college, I became a full-time and then went back to part-time once I started operating and managing a big health club. There's that word, managing. Um, but I had a very different style of things. Well, long story short, I started. I noticed that a lot of my clients, I was, I had a lot of success stories with my clients, but I also had a lot of failures. And I would say, it, this is going to sound terrible, but I would say probably 30% of the clients that came and saw me from personal training were actually actually saw the results that they wanted, and the other 70% would flake off. Brian, you know about this. How many people have you come in, have, have worked with you, and all of a sudden you don't see them anymore for another, you know, two years? They work with you for two months. You know, I'm sure you've had that before. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, I, I started realizing there was a lot of that going on, and I really didn't know why it was or, or whatnot, but at, then I decided that I was going to take my life into doing more coaching, and I was going to start working with some, you know, or trying to produce some the best bikini athletes and models in the world. And so I started doing a coaching type of program, and what I noticed is that my success rate went from 30% up to about 90 percent and that's no exaggeration 90 percent of the people that came and saw me in my coaching program were seeing the results that they wanted now I started reading this and I, I just like what you guys talked about the, the lazy and stupid employees right well a, a lot of times a personal trainer will keep their clients lazy and stupid because the, the client relies on that trainer to go into the gym. The, the client relies on that trainer for motivation. The client re really relies on that trainer for every aspect of their fitness. And if that trainer goes on vacation, well, guess what? 
the client goes on vacation too. And so there was a lot, there was a lot of issues with that particular thing. However, the reason why my coaching was so successful is because I put the onus on the client themselves and they knew that they, at the end of the day, determined their success and their failure. And I was there just to guide them. I was there to support them, like you said, Mike. And I was there just to give them the tools that they needed and show them how they needed to do it. But at the end of the day, they had to do the work. And that's when everybody started seeing results that they wanted. And that's when my success rate went through the roof. So I'm not saying that for people to go out there and, and, and fire their trainers or do any of that. But understand that if you really want to get out on your own and you really want to see an impact in your, in your body and you want to see a change in your body and you're using a trainer – Start learning to do this stuff on your own because you have to understand that you have the ability to change. You have that, that thing inside of you to really make a difference. You just got to learn to find it and you have to learn to start thinking on your own. So that's kind of what this whole thing really reminded me of is, is to learn to accept that at the end of the day, you determine your success and you determine your failures and not anybody else. So that's what I've got here with iFit Model. We're going to send it over to Brian Kaiser for his three keys. Aaron, that was great stuff, man. That was really good stuff. Um, and you know, I've seen, I've seen that, like you pointed out, I've seen that uh, time and time again. But I've also seen, just like Mike has seen in the coaching world, as he and I both uh, in the business arena have watched uh, the better business coaches uh, work really hard to grow and develop an engine individual, not just uh, give them little nuggets where they get a little bit of success, but they feel that they couldn't do it without us. Like we want to empower them to do it without us. And that kind of takes me into my three keys. Um, and, and the first of the three keys that I got out of this blog is managers are not leaders. And leaders usually don't want to be managers. Now, the term manager, if you think about it, the manager, uh, just the title gives you uh, a perceived power and control, if you will, over a set number of, of, rec of reports. And when I say reports, those are people usually that you're in, in control of, quote unquote. But you're not really. At the end of the day, if you're not doing anything to help those people develop and grow, as you pointed out, then they're probably not going to stay. And then, you know, Mike pointed out in the, uh, in the summary there, in your face statistics, average employee stays one and a half years in two different places that he cited. It was they left the company because of the managers. They left the company because of who they reported to. And they probably, if we went and we read those reports and we studied a little deeper into that, they probably left because they weren't growing. They were only allowed to do so much, and that success was on an incremental level that they couldn't do more than, and they were required never to do less than. So managers you know, do not have control or power, but the people that really have the control and power are the leaders, and they, they command that through – uh, through gaining authority, through trust, gaining authority through empowerment of the people that that they that follow them, and uh, you can. Chuck Blakeman's a great example. We follow him. He's a great leader. He empowers us to be better than we were yesterday. Good, good point. I mean, he empowers us to be better than we were before we read this blog. Better than we were before we broke this this blog down. So that's empowerment. That's a leader. That's a great example of a leader. The next thing uh, of my three keys is it's about personal growth if you want company growth. And when I say you know personal growth, we go back to my first key. Leaders want to empower people to grow, to be better. When people are better, profits are better. It's, it's a simple equation. You can usually grow a company faster if you have everybody moving in the same direction. It, you're probably not going to grow very quick or you're going to stay stagnant if everyone's you know, seeming to go in a direction because they are made to because the manager says, hey, you got to make that 100 calls. you got to do this. you got to do that. But in their mind, they're saying, man, I can't wait to get out of here and find something that I can do that's better than this, that's better than what you're giving me what you're allowing me. I wish you let me grow so I could feel empowered to move this company in a direction. And I think that's point to the blog to Chuck. Quit hiring managers. Don't hire them. They're, it's not working. It doesn't work. It hasn't worked. It's not going to work. Uh, the last of the three keys is simply it feeds off, off the other two. It's about empowering, not control. You can't control people. 
I mean, um, and Mike, you and I are a little older than Aaron, and Aaron, I'm sure you tried this when you first became management of a of a, a club. Oh, Mike, you're, I, I'm sorry. Mike's only 21. I forget to tell everybody that. Anyways, um, when you first become a manager and you're, you're – first thing out of the gate is, man, I got to make these people do this and that and another thing, and I'm in control. I'm in power. Well, no. What you find real quick is you don't get a lot of respect. The people don't work up to any level of potential, and you struggle to even get people to do the simple things within the organization because they're not empowered. Once you start empowering them and teaching them and giving them responsibilities and letting them make some some decisions and letting them feel part of the vision and part of the overall uh, uh, attitude and culture of your organization, now they're empowered. Now, you know, we'll use G Aaron's gym experience. Now picking up the towels and wiping down the equipment, they just do it without even being told because they have pride in their workspace. They're empowered. That's part of them. That's their space. They they own it as much as anyone else. And you can't do that if you're thinking from a manager mindset of I've got the control, I've got the power, you're going to do it, or I'm firing you. And I think that's a great point that uh, Chuck made in his in his uh, in his his piece there. You know, uh, managers were created because in the industrial age, someone came up with a philosophy. Uh, I believe his name is Drucker. That People were there was two kinds of people lazy and stupid and they needed the less lazy the less stupid to control the lazy and stupid and that's how we got this and it's he it, it pointed out it never has worked from the beginning and it's really not working now so there's my three keys managers are not leaders personal growth equals company growth and empower not control Brian those are those are awesome points and I love the you know the example you gave about you know or else we'll fire you and I think that's one of the big differences in a culture that's managed over lead is in a culture that's managed the people you know th they operate based on fear and loss as opposed to motivation and future and you know so you make a really good point there so let's let's move on Mike Calderwood's coaching advantage application so my application for this guys is first we gotta take some first steps okay we have we've gotta look at our current problems and challenges. I don't care if you're a solopreneur or if you've got huge departments throughout your company. This is for everybody. You've got to make a list of your current problems and challenges and you've got to figure out where they stem from. Do they stem from over complexity, micromanaging, poor culture? Are you always putting out fires or dealing with what's thrown at you? Uh, are you stuck in the day-to-day -day and not working on the future of your business? Are you chasing clients and dealing with employee issues? See, if you said yes to any of these examples, you're probably managing, not leading. Right? Now, if you've got a big company, you can't blame the managers and the leaders for that. You can only blame you because you're the leader. It all starts with ourselves every time. Okay, so the first thing is to take those steps and look at the problems that you have and figure out where they stem from and figure out are they a leadership problem or are they a management problem and if so, how do we change that and take a leadership approach. The second thing you have to do is you've got to assess your team. Is it a management team or is it a leadership team? And I'm not talking about titles. Guys, we don't shift from management to leadership from taking Bob and making him changing his title from the manager of accounting to the leader of accounting. Okay, It doesn't work that way. This is not about titles. This is about action and culture and the way things are being done. Brian, you guys over at Growth Coaching Systems uh, are a unique group. You've got insurance agents, coaches, videographers, and there's no managers. No. Tell us about that and about your team and how that works. Well, um, first I want to say that we haven't done it perfectly. We've had our ups and, and, and our downs and our sidewayses. Uh, but basically the way it is is everyone has a vision of where they would like to go, and it falls in line with the company vision, with growth coaching systems. And, of course, Dennis also runs Farmers uh, District 30, which is half of the Houston market here in Houston, Texas. So he has that. But he's taken this same approach with his uh, Ambassadors for Change, which is basically uh, 12 independent business owners 
that have bought into a vision that was greater than themselves, and Dennis has provided the tools and empowered them to grow personally, which has exponentially grown their companies, their individual agencies. In fact, he has some of the largest agencies in the company, and the company struggles trying to duplicate what he has done with these these individuals. But it was exactly what I talked about in the in the in the, the three keys there. It was giving them the tools, empowering them with the the tools, with the 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 knowledge, the information, the how to to have personal growth, and that equaled company growth. That exponentially equal. That was a 10x factor in their growth was their personal growth, and that grew their companies. And I've done it with sports teams. I'm sure Aaron, he told you his story. He made the shift. It was a mindset shift. I'm not going to be controlling and all encompassing. I'm going to be empowering and uh, and a teacher and a leader here, and I'm going to shift that. And it took some time, and it took him getting some more education. It took him seeking out some different um, mindsets and mentalities to surround himself with. So he had personal growth, so he was able to grow the clients and empower himself for the growth. So that's how that's how we do it here. That's what we try. We strive for that. And like I said, we've had our ups and downs. Some of it's worked well. Some of it hasn't. But we we stick with the uh, uh, with the PDCA method, which Mike's very familiar with. We 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 plan it. We do it. We we took a look at it, and then we make an adjustment. So that's what we we go through. And uh, yeah, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. But the the tools of the empowerment are always there. And it's always you know goes back to the responsibility of the individuals in our company to get things done. And without managers, you still get things done. Even the stupid, lazy people, huh? Even the stupid, lazy people are still. <laughs> some of them are remarkably talented, and uh, and for stupid people, um, yeah, they would blow your mind with some of the things that they can do and achieve. Yeah, no kidding, right? So it was take some first steps. Look at your current problems. Do they stem from being you know management system? To assess your your current team. Make sure that it's a leadership team, not a management team. And finally, work on a coach to define the culture, values, and characteristics that you desire, as well as the steps that need to be taken to shift your environment from management to leadership. Even if you're a solopreneur, you, a coach can help you stop managing the day-to-day -day and start leading your business towards the future. Now, when it comes to achieving the goals that you want, predefining some things like I said, culture, values, characteristics, goals, big picture, whatever it might be, your vision is a big piece of that. Aaron, you work with, with top-end models. It's not easy to get there. This is a high level of achievement. How does predetermining the culture, the values, the goals, really predefining and predeciding some things, how does that play a role in reaching a level of achievement that you help people reach? Well, without that, you cannot do anything, and that's—I mean—it's as simple as that. Um, you know, you have to know every single step of the way, and if you don't know every single step along that process, you're just not going to accomplish the things that you want to do. Uh, I'll give you an example. Today, uh, I was speaking to a client, and he's going to be doing his first modeling show. The guy has a great physique; everything's great, but what's not there? is his understanding of the process. And although I explained the process to him at the very beginning of the entire thing, he forgot it all because he was so busy thinking about something else. So what I had to do is pull out the sheet that we did at the very beginning and say, remember these things. And we went over those things again. He's like, ah, okay, now remember. And now he's back on track. And in six weeks, he's going to show the world what he's got. And I'm sure he's going to just completely crush it. So you've got to define that. And sometimes as a client uh, or, or even as a coach, you've got to go back and give that to your client and help them understand it. Remember, this is what we did. Awesome. I love it. So again, Take those first steps. Is it a problem? List your problems. Do they stem from management? Assess your team. Is it a management team or a leadership team? And make sure that you work with somebody that can help you define the end result. Right? Stephen Covey taught us in in the seven uh, seven habits. Habit number two is to begin with the end in mind. So I love it. So guys, that's almost a wrap. Brian, what did I learn today? Well, Mike, what you learned today very specifically and what Chuck really brought out is that I believe his name is Drucker. 
was wrong. People are not lazy and stupid. People just need to be empowered so that they can grow personally and gain the, the skills they need to perform at a higher level. You need to, if you're that person that is the, uh, as you put it, the, the leader and, and has been put there to exist, to be the champion and serve the a group of people, then you need to be doing stuff for yourself so that you grow. And then you also be need, need to be empowering those people with information. Aaron put it, well, give them a process, give them something to follow. They can grow from that. That's what you learned today. Awesome. Aaron, what did I learn today? Well, besides realizing that I'm still awesome, at some point I wasn't awesome way back in my early years. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, really at the end of the day, it's just it's leadership. You learn that leadership is the way to go. Don't worry about managing, putting things in place. Just focus on yourself and focusing on leading your team um, and leading yourself to prosperity and to success. For the listeners, stop managing. You need to eliminate every manager in your company. Thank you, Chuck Blakeman, for an awesome blog. This has been another Bam Slam home run breakdown where I, Mike Calder, along with co-hosts Brian Kaiser and Aaron Zambrano, break down expert business blogs so that you can better understand and apply the information to your business and your life for real results. Look forward to new editions of the Bam Blog Breakdown each and every Monday and Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Reminder, Get over, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you again to Evernote for making it possible for us to stay organized and collaborate. And remember all the links for today's show, including a direct link to Chuck's blog post, uh, are in the video description below the video if you're watching this. If you like what you heard, you feel like you need further information to take advantage of the products or services of the experts of the blogs that we break down, reach out to Brian, Aaron, or I, and we will make a professional, personal introduction for you. In addition, if you need help with your planning, leadership, health, wellness, business development, mindset development, or personal development, reach out to Brian, Aaron, or I. We are here to serve, and we leave this Bam Slam asking you, how can we help you? Guys, we're out. See ya. See you later.